Harper's Kennel of Stella, Missouri is proud to be sponsoring this portion of broadcasting on KNEO. Owned by Judy and Danny Harper, Harper's Kennel of Stella, Missouri specializes in French Bulldogs. For more information, the phone number is 417-628-3083. Welcome to Crosspoint. 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 An interactive program featuring ministers and leaders of the Christian community addressing the issues that are challenging the church today. Here's your host, Mark Taylor. Welcome to Crosspoint. I'm Mark Taylor. And do we have a time sensitive show today? With the total eclipse crossing the United States, does this have any relationship? to Bible prophecy. My guest is pastor, author, and speaker, Bible prophecy teacher, Mark Biltz. Pastor Mark Biltz, hey, thanks for joining us today on this very special edition of Crosspoint that we're doing because we got some time-sensitive stuff happening here. Uh, I've talked to you uh, in times past uh, about the blood moons and other things uh, that you uh, have kind of researched and looked at and got your insight on, and now I noticed here a while back that you had did a deal on this eclipse coming up, and since you were talking about it, and we're kind of in the path of it here in this area, and many people are across the nation, because that is sweeping a pretty wide path that I'm looking at here. I mean, we're talking a good length of the United States. Um, And then we had one close to you out there about, I think, seven years ago that I actually was in as well, that uh, went through Oregon and up through that area as well. So we're looking at all these things happening in our world. And, and you know, I've seen a, a piece here out of USA Today talking about a total eclipse is near. For some, it's evidence of a higher power. For others, it's a warning. And then, you know, some people just think it's another solar event in the heavens. What what are you seeing and what's happening in this eclipse this time? Well, I really believe that... God is warning the United States, and I say that because in Genesis 1.14, God said he created the sun and the moon specifically for sending signals, for signs. A solar eclipse is referring to judgment coming on the nation. As a matter of fact, Mark, since the United States has become a nation in 1776, there's only been eight total solar eclipses that have completely crossed the United States, either uh, east to west or south to north. And guess when they occurred? Two of them were during the Revolutionary War in the 1700s. Then there were some in the 1800s during the Civil War. Then in the 1900s during the Vietnam War. And so now in the 2000s, we had that one seven years ago uh, in 2017, and it was the one and only total solar eclipse since we became a nation that only crossed the United States. It didn't go into Mexico or Canada. And then this one that's going south to north is intersecting the one in 2017 right in an area you may very well know as in southern Illinois as Little Egypt. Yeah. Not just that, but we've got a, in an area down there, and you know as well as that, the New Madrid Fault area, and you look at that X, you're looking <laughs> pretty close in those areas that that's happening. I know uh, here what I've seen on the reports the Highway Patrol has put out that from a town called Popular Bluff, which is not far from here, but it is a ways, all the way into Illinois, there's like 140 miles that it'll be dark, they said, in that area there at a period, and they're really cautioning people about you know, driving and stuff like this. So this is kind of a massive event, isn't it? Oh, it's huge. I mean, there's like 100 million people that are going to be seeing it. Of course, even here in Washington State, we'll be able to see the eclipse, but it won't be in totality. It'll just be like the bottom part of the sun. Yeah. They're also, again, you know, you look at all these things that are happening. Uh, nothing just happens, And by the way. Uh, they say the path hits uh, 15 states. It goes from Texas to Maine. Is that unusual as well, that it would go all the way from one end of the nation to the other? Well, like I said, it's only happened eight times since we've become a nation. Yeah, yeah. And uh, some of the towns are involved in this. Now, do you think that is coincidental? You mentioned about what they call the Egypt, you know, there over there in the Illinois side. But 
Also, we've got towns like uh, Rapture, and, and Nineveh shows up several times in this area. And if you look back in the Bible about Nineveh, there was an area of warning there. Yes, there was a total solar eclipse over Nineveh three months before Jonah arrived. Now, down in Texas, there was another annual solar eclipse that happened a week after Hamas attacked Israel. It was like October 14th, 50, and it went from Oregon down through Texas. Well, this coming eclipse is also going to intersect there in Texas. Well, it intersects in an area known as the Texas Triangle. And in that triangle, that is the number one area of the entire United States for human trafficking and sex trafficking. And within that Texas Triangle is a city called Jonah and a city called Nineveh. So these things maybe aren't so coincidental. Oh, exactly. And I think uh, the nation is called to repentance, but I'm not sure that it is going to work. Uh, America is really on a immoral downslide that I think is beyond repair. You know, looking at some of the stuff you put out on that, you talk about it being, is it a sign that America needs to repent, and what does America need to repent of? What is the issue of repentance here? I mean, I can name several, but what do you believe the big things are? Well, even the church is becoming woke. You know, the the uh, the church is becoming totally immoral. But as a whole, as a nation, I, the biggest problems, are, it, it, when you think about it, the human sex trafficking, you've got uh, the drug problem that's going on. Uh, I, I think those are uh, two of the biggest things, is uh, just the immorality, even among uh, the church. In Jeremiah chapter 7, uh, the church, well, the synagogue, if you want to say it, the uh, God's people were saying it's okay to do all these immoral things. They tried to appear righteous on the outside, but on the inside they were thieves and murderers and adulterers and all these kinds of things. So uh, God's problem isn't with the wicked. It's always with the righteous who are wicked. Now, you know, you, we talked about, you know, that none of a lot of Americans are looking to, to see this solar eclipse, and it's not just a scientific event. That's that's the point you're trying to kind of make today. Yes, it is a scientific event, but it's not just a scientific event. There's a reason for it. Is it like, you know, what we would call a harbinger? You know? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, Mark. You hit the nail right on the head. I think this is a warning that America is going down. You know that big container ship that just hit that big bridge up there Correct. in Baltimore? Mm -hmm. Well, it just so happens that event happened within hours after the United States betrayed Israel and abstained uh, during a U.N. Security Council vote for a ceasefire in Gaza. And then within hours later, that bridge went down, which was known as the Francis Scott Key Bridge, the Star Spangled Banner. Okay, our national anthem gets torn down hours after we betray Israel. So I really see this as a harbinger of judgment coming upon the United States. Now, Pastor, I, I figure you probably know this, but I'll kind of point this out, because I've been doing a little research on the things going on, and they talk about actually several extraordinary rare events that are unfolding in April, not just this, you know, but there's a, a deal about a comet, there's a, some type of planetary yes. alignment that's going on, yes. uh, there's a NASA yes. rocket launch going on, I think, on that yes. same day, and um, this... Yeah. Also, this yeah. red heifer sacrifice. Oh, yeah. There is all yeah. kinds of stuff going on in the month of April, and this is kind of it, kicking right. it off. So how does this all play in? Well, you know, that, that one comet that's coming is known as the Devil Comet because it has horns, and it is coming, being seen in the United States during Passover. You'll be able to see this on, well, April 8th is the solar eclipse. You may be able to see the devil comet then, but it'll be seen the most right over Passover, which is incredible. But yes, all of these things are God, I believe, trying to get our attention that judgment is coming. Uh, the Bible says God always warns before he brings judgment. Yeah. And, and I think it's uh, too late to pray for God to 
stop the judgment. All we could do now is pray that he mitigates it. Yeah. You know, of course, living here and where we do in this part of the country, um, you know, there's always been talk of the New Madrid Fault splitting, which if it did, it could actually split the country in two in a way, uh, or at least a good part of it. And we've been told there's all kinds of possibilities. And so, you know, you look into these things as things are happening. I know it's over 60, maybe 70 now. Uh, different trimmers we've already had this year along the New Madrid Fault over there. And so, you know, you just kind of wonder on some of these things sometimes if God isn't starting to shake us to let us know you're in trouble and you better get your house in order. Well, I, you know, Taiwan just had a major earthquake the other day. But I, usually some of your major earthquakes usually happen on a new moon or a full moon, and April 8th is a, a new, new moon. moon. Yes, it is a new moon. Now, that's, that's correct. Yeah, because I know you've studied that, of course, from the blood moons. Is, that, is there any way those even play into effect in something like this with an eclipse? Yes, I think earthquakes definitely play uh, uh, in effect, you know, uh, on the new moon and on the full moon. Yeah. But uh, I, I, the thing, Mark, I really see that people need to be concerned about, and I don't want to be some gloom and doomsayer, just like it's Hurricane Katrina. I, I want to be more like a forecaster that say, hey, I see a Hurricane 5 coming. You know, you better get ready. But I think what's going to happen uh, throughout this whole year, through the end of the year, I think we're going to see terrorist attacks right here on the land of it, uh, the United States. Yeah, I, I believe we're going to see terrorist attacks. And I believe with the election coming up, you're going to see all kinds of riots between the right and left politically. I think you're going to see a lot of riots between the pro-Israel and the pro-Palestinian. I think you're going to see a lot of riots from uh, the people who are against uh, you know, immigration uh, versus the immigrants causing problems. And not, but the big thing is, uh, plus race riots, I think we're going to be seeing all kinds of crises happening dividing America this year. Yeah, a lot of unrest, uh, for sure. And, totally. and, we've, and totally. we've been heading there uh, for a while. You know, I already already noticed that uh, those groups have moved in on that Francis Scott Key Bridge that went down, and they're wanting it renamed when they build it back to something else because of, again, one of our political correct uh, situations. I mean, this stuff just never stops, and it just continues to grow in intensity. And I guess maybe it's the same thing in our atmosphere. Exactly. Well, the thing is this. I really believe, uh, like Moses' tabernacle was patterned after the one in heaven, I believe there are wars in heaven that are played out on earth. And in uh, the book of Daniel, you have a war going on in heaven, and Daniel's been praying for three weeks, and it says that this one angel finally comes to him three weeks later, and he says, I've been fighting the prince of Persia for three weeks. Well, that's Iran. And the message he gives them, is what you're seeing is a vision that will happen in the last days to your people. Well, we're in those last days. And then he says, I have to go back and fight the Prince of Persia. Well, when you read that story, it all happens during the month of Nisan, and the solar eclipse is Nisan 1. So I believe we could potentially see a major attack on Israel from Iran and Hezbollah during this next month. That's what I'm seeing. And you're seeing it right now in the news, yeah. how because they uh, destroyed the uh, Iranian general over there in Damascus, that uh, Iran is really ready to escalate. Uh, and so I really believe we could see Iran and Hezbollah, a major, major war take place next month. Well, speaking of that, uh, you know, I came back from broadcaster's convention, and <clears throat> there was a lot of Jewish presence there and talking about these things. Uh, that were happening over there. You know, one thing that I noticed, too, that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu said when he was talking about how they were going after Hamas, and he says, uh, in one of his statements, he says, we'll track them down, uh, you know, if we have to flatten Damascus to do it. And that, it says right in the Bible, that Damascus is no more at the end. Isaiah 17, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he realized what he said when he said that, but I, boy, I picked up on it and thought, "Oh my god!" Well, of course. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Well, I think uh, I think it'll, we'll see the Psalm eighty three war, which yeah. involves Amalek, and we'll see the Isaiah seventeen war uh, possibly this year, next month. 
What about Ezekiel and the Ezekiel 38, 37? What I think it? that's in about seven. I, I think that's at the end. I really. Uh, some people believe that that Gog Magog war is at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I, I believe it's at the very end because when you look at Ezekiel, uh, and then you go to Revelation and you tie those together, and it's the same thing. Well, you know the one in Revelation is at the end, not the beginning. Yeah. So uh, I I believe that is yet to come, but I yeah. believe it's toward the uh, end. Yeah, and I've noticed that one you talked about in Psalms there. The I, I've seen some Jewish. Uh, uh, different ministries point that out that this could be the very place in in the Psalms that that's talking about. So, yeah, I did pick up on that as well. Uh, Fester, stay with us and folks, you stay with us and we're going to be back in just a moment with more. This is Mark Taylor. If you miss a broadcast of Crosspoint, you can always go to our website at www.kneo.org and click on the programs page. There you can access the current Crosspoint program as well as the last four programs that have been aired. Never miss another Crosspoint program again. Go to www.kneo.org today. Welcome back to Crosspoint. I'm Mark Taylor. I've got with me today Pastor Mark Biltz. He's the founder and senior pastor of El Shaddai Ministries in Washington State. Pastor, you've written books, you speak in places. Tell people how they can find out more about your ministry, uh, about those books you've written and what you do, and maybe even about having you come and speak. Oh, that would be wonderful. I'd love to do that. Go to our website. Uh, we're El Shaddai Ministries, but to make it simple, our website is esm.us for United States, not com. esm.us. I've written this new book, America at War, 2024 through 2026. We're just now sending them out. We just got them, but Amazon will have them in stock in a couple of weeks. But those that want it now, they can go to our website. As far as our congregation, we're very weird. And what I mean by that, we have a dozen languages spoken in our building. We have a lot of Russians who come. We translate into Russian live. We have a lot of Hispanics who come. We translate into Spanish. We have a lot of South Koreans. We have a lot of people from South America, from Africa, from Europe, China, you name it. Uh, it's, they're all coming to the physical building. And then uh, we broadcast live to over 300 cities and 30 nations. Uh, we have our Internet audience is about 250,000. But they're of every denomination. So we have every tribe, nation, tongue, and denomination at our place. It's yes, crazy. and your background is Jewish, isn't it? On my father's side, I have relatives who died in the Holocaust, and there are Biltzes listed in Israel's uh, Holocaust Museum, Yad Vashem. Yeah. We were talking here about, you know, how Israel is playing in with what could be happening in Israel. You know, I thought it was one thing, uh, with all these things happening in April, this seems to be an interesting month. And here at our uh, convention, when we were hearing from Jewish people, they were talking about the how everything could just turn in just a few moments. Uh, for example, uh, he- Hezbollah is different than Hamas. It's bigger. It's got more weapons. It's got more rockets for sure. And so they were saying, you know, if Hezbollah gets drawn into this, which they did think Hezbollah will get drawn into it, but if they could shoot five or 6,000 rockets at once at them, that there's no way the dome system there in Israel can take all of that. And so the only way to stop them from releasing that many after them, you know, one after another, would have to they would have to strike back with a nuclear bomb of some kind to just blow them up. And, you know, you do something like that, that's probably going to trigger a nuclear weapon being shot from Iran at them. And then they're going to have to, you know, counter with a nuclear weapon back. So with just in a matter of a few pushes of some buttons and some orders given, within five minutes our world could be upside down, could it not? Absolutely, and what I believe is going to happen, because we are at our weakest point militarily, which is what our government, the Department of Defense has even said, we're at our weakest point militarily. Here we got this big expanse with Ukraine and Russia. Well, I believe around our election, when we don't even have anyone in charge, uh, we may not even have an election, but I would not be surprised if China attacked Taiwan, if North Korea attacks South Korea, here will be having uh, Iran attacking Israel and Hezbollah. What is the United States going to do? Yeah, I just noticed yesterday that they made an announcement they're going to quick replenish in our uh, uh, strategic reserves, uh, that they just they've quit it. 
and they so they haven't replaced even that from what they had drained them down to, which was the lowest in, I guess, ever. So we do have a lot of issues, don't we? Well, the thing is, yeah, you, we sure do. But the thing is, Amalek of the Bible always attacks the weak. And here we are at our weakest point. Uh, if ever in history an enemy wanted to, to attack another nation, like the NATO alliance, you know, or something, or now is the time. I'm telling you, strategically, this year is the year to do a major attack of a, one country against another country. Uh, as well as attacking the United States, because we're so divided. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Now, with this uh, eclipse coming up on Monday, do you see a biblical connection with the eclipses? Uh, and these are lunar and solar. Can you explain that a little bit, the, the difference yeah. there? Yes, I would love to. Lunar eclipses refers to war and the nation of Israel. Solar eclipses refer to war and the nation over the next two years, there are a total of eight solar and lunar eclipses that are going to be taking place. But when they occur on the biblical calendar is what is so mind-blowing. Originally, Tishri 1, around our September, the first of Tishri, or Rosh Hashanah, is the day Adam was made, and it was the civil calendar. Well, then God told Moses, to make Nissan 1, which is the eclipse day, uh, April 8th this year, to be the religious calendar. Well, two years in a row, there are total solar eclipses, solar eclipses on Nissan 1, Tishri 1. Nissan 1, Tishri 1. And then the lunar eclipses, there are four in a row, and they land on Purim, the very day that Amalek uh, and Esther, in the book of Esther, all the Jews are to be destroyed. So that happens uh, in the spring, uh, in uh, like the month of February, okay, or March, I should say, Purim, and then it happens in the month right before Tishri, which is a lull. It happens on a lull 15, and that is known as the month of repentance. That's the very month Jesus when uh, into the wilderness for 40 days, it's the same time frame Jonah prophesied to Nineveh for 40 days. It's the same time Moses went up uh, on the mountain the second time to make atonement for those same 40 days. So historically, to have these solar eclipses two years in a row on the same days, and the uh, lunar eclipses two years in a row on the same days, all significant biblical days, God is telling the world, this is this is it. Yeah. Also, and I'm sure that you probably know a little bit about these things, but as Nineveh went and, you know, Jonah was sent to Nineveh, tell them to repent, which they did. And today, is there Jonah's, I guess, being sent to America, telling them to repent, and they're not listening? Well, that's exactly what happened uh, with the nation of Israel. As goes Israel, so goes the United States. It says God said he had his servants, the prophets, rise up early to go warn Israel, because he, he, he wanted them to be saved and to be warned. But the problem is Israel said as a nation, we don't want to listen to you. And that's what America is right now. God is warning us, and we're saying we're not going to listen to you. And that's why this judgment is coming. And that's why I wrote my book, America at War, 2024 through 2026. All right, so could there be a connection, too, with, uh, you know, where this is going through in, here in Missouri uh, is down in what they call the boot heel, uh, and it's down around the New Madrid area and that area there around Sykeston. But here about a month ago or so, a, a revival has broken out down there. It's a tent revival. They've now got four tents together trying to hold all the people. Thousands of people are coming at night uh, to this just a basic regular tent revival. Hundreds are being saved, and it's right there on that fault area and where this eclipse will go through on Monday. Is there a biblical significant even that? Oh, I think so, because it's, there's always a remnant. There's always a remnant. And uh, they could very well be mitigating the damage that is going to be done there. Yeah, well, I never did think about that, but I guess that it could be very, very likely as well. Uh, we just see so many things happening in our world. 
Um, and I know that you keep an eye on those things. Uh, and America has really just continued to nosedive. Um, it's kind of like with Daniel chapter 5, uh, you know, where Belshazzar, you know, sees a handwriting on the wall, don't know what's going yep. on. But we are seeing handwriting on the wall today. And it's really like the scripture says, they had to knew a man, you know, the queen knew a man, said he knows what, you know, will be able to interpret this. Nobody else can. Yeah. But really, Christians should be able to interpret the signs of the times that are happening right now to be able to tell others to be ready because this isn't just a a regular eclipse, but it's something to, again, tell us God works in the heavens. He works everywhere, and he's trying to get our attention. You know, the thing, too, is I I really see the economy crashing. Uh, Most people don't know the difference between a million, a billion, and a trillion other than another zero. But I like to make it simple. A million seconds is only 12 days, but a billion seconds takes 32 years. That is huge difference between a million and a billion. 12 days versus 32 years. But the difference between a billion and a trillion, here a billion is 32 years, a trillion is 32,000 years. And so one trillion is, one trillion seconds is 32,000 years, and we are $34 trillion in debt. And the government just came out saying we're going to be going into debt $1 trillion every three months now. Yeah, and, well, it's kind of obvious maybe it's God himself that's propping us up for that moment when he drops the prop. And that will get people's attention, won't it? Oh, my gosh. When our economy completely crashes and uh, there, there is no currency, I, I believe this is all being set up by uh, Big Brother, One World Government. They have to take America down. If they're going to institute a whole new world order, they've got to take the biggest democracy down. And one of the ways is to uh, trash the currency. So I see us being on a digital currency by next year. Yeah, yeah, it is coming. I don't. I believe that for sure. Uh, let me ask you a question. We talked, uh, you know, about this eclipse and and talk about Christians and how this relates to, with God. Are there other um, groups, religious groups, that also look at this type of a thing with this eclipse, and they see something as well in it or something different? Uh, is it just the, the the Christian people, or is there others? Oh, I believe there's others. And again, uh, all the Muslims believe that we're in the days of their Messiah. The Jews believe we're in the days of their Messiah. Christians believe we're in the days of their Messiah. Uh, and, and so this is why we... I, I wrote another book called Decoding the Antichrist a couple years ago, and I go into this. But I believe the whole world realizes... Uh, we're in trouble. We're in big trouble worldwide in so many ways, on so many levels. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i kind of looking at some, uh, you know, different reports out there and things that people have, have said, you know, and some here, some people believe it's a time for prayer and introspection. Uh, some believe that, well, here's one, God's warning America of impending disaster. This is Anne Graham Lotz, uh, daughter of Billy Graham. Uh talks about this and the solar eclipses and goes all the way back to August of 2017. Uh, they, there's a lot of speculation. Some of them talk about about how two of the eclipses appear kind of mimicking the shapes and letters of the Hebrew alphabet. <laughs> there's a lot of things out there. Oh, for sure, for sure. I think people are, I think right now there's a division in the church between the woke church and the awakened church. Uh, and I see a lot of it is going to be where they stand with the nation of Israel, because the book of Ruth really is a prophecy of our day right now. Ruth, her name means friend, and he befriended Israel, worked the harvest, and brought forth King David. The other lady was Orpah. Orpah means to turn your back on, the back of the neck. And it says she turned her back on Naomi and went back to her pagan god. Well, Ruth and Orpah are both the church grafted into Israel. But there's going to be a major division in the church today between the Ruth church, who befriends Israel, and the Orpah church, who turns her back on the nation of Israel. Now, as we know, Ruth beget David. Well, guess what? Orpah beget Goliath. And so here we see, historically, a repeat 
where the David church is going to be fighting the Goliath church in these last days, based on who supported Israel and stays with them and who leaves. Okay, so Pastor Mark, again, you're the founder of and senior pastor there at El Shaddai Ministries in Washington State. Author book, got this new book coming out. I'm, hopefully we'll be talking to you uh, a little later here about this book, America at War. But tell people how they can find out more about your ministry. Sure. ESM.us. www.esm.us. All of our recordings are free. The notes are even free to download. I have like eight pages of Bible verses supporting everything. Uh, and it's all free on our website, all of our teaching. All right. Well, folks, stay with us, and we're going to be back with another edition here in just a moment. Sharing your faith can be as easy as sharing your favorite radio station. There's no greater way to share the gospel, to reach as many people as possible than through Christian radio. Tell your friends where they can experience hope. It's always pointed to Christ. 91.7 The Word. You're listening to Cross Point Special Edition today as we put together this eclipse coming up on the 8th, which is Monday. And a lot of people are interested in that. In fact, millions of people um, across the world even are watching this. But here in the United States, it's really going to affect us more, of course, because that's where it's going. We've had eclipses in the past. Do you see this eclipse being a little different than even the last one? Or the, In other words, you know, they say earthquakes can grow with intensity, you know, and the pains continue to grow. Is this kind of the same thing? I think so, and I'm glad you brought something up I want to bring out. As you know, it says earthquakes will increase in the last days. Yeah. Well, back in 1972, there was only one earthquake from five to six. There's only one earthquake in all of 1972. But in 1973, it jumped to 1,200. Well, 1973 is when they passed Roe v. Wade. And because they compare birth pains to earthquakes, I really see how that was a big trigger also showing we're in the last day. But I definitely see things growing in intensity, just like with those earthquakes. And the birth pangs. And you know what? Along that line, I, you know, because uh, they dilate 1 to 10, I wouldn't be surprised if we had earthquakes around 9 or 10 in the next few years. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of intensity, Mark, increasing in every area. Well, the, if I recall, there is something along the lines in the scriptures that says that the earth groans for its redemption and it groans. Yeah. So it, this is kind of what we can expect. Absolutely, absolutely. I think we're going to see a real intensification. We just had that big one in Taiwan uh, that, you know, causes uh, just devastated a lot of people and buildings. But I think we're going to see a huge intensity in earthquakes over the next couple of years. Well, if America is to repent, what does that, go, what does that look like? Wow, I, I think repentance uh, always involves going home back to the God, I think we're going to see revivals like you're talking about, that tent revival that's going on down where you are. But I hope it's a, a revival that sticks. I mean, a lot of people turned to God, uh, you know, on 9-11, but three months later they were back to their old ways. Uh, because people don't turn to God in the good times, they turn to Him in the bad times. And I think that's why God wants everyone to turn to Him, because that's why you can have bad times coming. But I think a revival would be people would uh, start loving one another, helping one another. Uh, the world right now is full of too many narcissists. Their own focus is only themselves. But it's not going to. It's going to be an action of being kind one to another. So you, you, as you were mentioning a while ago, you believe this current eclipse, you know, has a tie to Israel, but also you believe even more so these things are tied to the Hebrew calendar. Correct. Oh, you hit the nail on the head. Absolutely. And the problem with Christianity today, we're on the wrong calendar. If you remember Daniel, uh, the Antichrist wants to change the time and the seasons. What is he talking about? I mean, we're supposed to know the times and seasons, but we don't. The reason why is our pagan solar calendar is 100% accurate. It's based only on the sun, though. Iran uses the same solar calendar we do. Well, the Muslims only use a lunar calendar. Well, God's not going to use a solar calendar. He's not going to use a lunar calendar. In the Bible, it says, let them determine the times and the seasons. So 
the biblical calendar uses the moon for months and the sun for years. They utilize both. And it's like if, if uh, your boss told you to come to work on Monday and you said, no, that doesn't work in my schedule, I'll come in on Tuesday. You're not going to be hired for very long. But the problem is, God says, I want you to use the solar lunar calendar. And mankind says no when the church has agreed, saying, no, we're not going to go on your calendar, we're going to go on ours. And this is why we're missing so many communications from God. Now, I don't know how this, but you mentioned the other religions. April 8th is actually the event during that time. Isn't that a pretty intense period during Ramadan? Yes, and a, a few days later, uh, Ramadan ends. Uh, but uh, the thing is, uh, yes, they have their own calendar, and they want to try to destroy Israel. But the key thing is, right now we are in the month of Iyar, okay, okay. on the biblical calendar. Iyar is a month of war. That is when the 1967 Six-Day War was fought. Is when 1948 was in Iyar that their uh, independence war was fought. But it's also the same month that uh, Amalek attacked, uh, is in the month of uh, Iyar. That's the month after Nisan, I'm sorry. The month before Nisan is Adar, and Adar is when Amalek attacked during the Book of Esther on Purim. So here you have the month of Adar, the 12th month, is when Amalek attacked. Then you have Nisan, and then you have Iyar. And Iyar is when all their major wars were fought uh, in Amalek. But right now we're in the month of war with Purim. And so one of the things in Ecclesiastes, it says there's a time to be born, a time to die. You know, there's a time of peace and a time of war. If people understood the biblical calendar, they'd know when the time of war was. And we are in a time of war. Uh, And that's what we need to realize. Now, of course, the eclipse is when, I guess, the sun gets between the earth and the moon directly. Is that correct? The, um, the moon comes between the earth and the sun. Yes. And we know the sun's extremely powerful. It could do great damage if it was any closer to us. God's fixed it so it isn't. But the moon, what is the difference about the moon? Because, I mean, we're talking about the moon has an effect on this, but then the moon has the effect on the blood moons as well. Why is the moon the central point sometimes of this? Well, you know what? Uh, you are so smart. The amazing thing is, uh, you talked about the letter X over the United States. Yes. That form, just like we have different font on our computer, Moses had a different font than David, who had a different font than today. The le- the last letter, like in the Greek, we say Alpha and Omega, English A to Z. In Hebrew, it's the Aleph to the Tav. The letter Tav is also a word, and it means a sign or a signal, and it or a signature. This is, and it forms the letter X. That's why when people couldn't sign their own name, they were to write an X, okay, because it means a signature. So the letter Tav means this is God's signature. So the fact that this X is going across the United States, this is God putting his stamp of approval on this. Well, the letter Tav has a numerical value of 400. Well, when God said he created the sun and the moon for signs, the sun is exactly 400 times larger than the moon, 400 times further away, which is why the sun and the moon look the same size. And so this whole thing is designed so people realize it's God talking to us. If you look at a one-story building, is it going to hide a 400-story building? No way. Well, that's the size difference. The moon is one story, the sun is 400 stories, but the only reason they can block it out is because it is exactly 400 times larger and 400 times further away that the moon is able to block out the sun. Okay, and then this coming up on April the 8th, this is a total solar eclipse. Yes. And it is different than the one in 2017 because this is a wider one. This is uh, more people will be able to see this than before, correct? Yes, I think the one in 2017 was about 75 miles wide, and this one I believe is about 130 miles wide. That, yes, that's that's correct. And and I know I've seen that one when that first one came through as well because I was out in your part of the country at that time. Here yeah. I think it's supposed to hit here around 12, 35 or something like that on Monday when this happens. 
what should a person really be really be thinking about? And instead of getting caught up in all the hype, is why is this happening? Uh, should it be more? Should we be really making this a matter of prayer? Absolutely, absolutely. But I think God is saying it's time for us to start looking up. Our redemption's drawing nigh. We we so many of the church are like the ostriches with their head in the sand. Uh, I think we need to prepare spiritually. I mean. I mean, of course, the government wants us to prepare stocking up on food and water and medicine and don't drive as if, you know, a four-minute event is going to make that big of a difference. But I, I believe that uh, God is warning us we better get spiritually prepared for what's coming uh, by the end of this year. So with that being said, we have our calendar of events, but on the prophetic calendar, with something like this happening and many other things have happened and are coming, where are we at in all of this, uh, Pastor, when it comes to the end time? I mean, are we even in the last days anymore, or are we now at the end of time? I love it. I love it. You're asking all the right questions. Here's the thing. The, the, I know this may come as a surprise to your audience, but the prophet Daniel was Jewish. Hello? Well, guess what? The whole reason the 70-year captivity was for 70 years was because the Jewish people did not honor the seventh year Shemitah cycle in releasing debts, okay, and letting the land rest. That's why they were in Babylon for 70 years. Now, we remember in Daniel his vision of 70 weeks. Well, those weeks are weeks of seven years. And for that, we determine when the Messiah came, and we understand there's one week of seven years left. Right? Yeah. Well, here's the deal. It's a Shemitah week. So the oh. tribulation cannot start any day. It cannot start any month. It cannot start any year. The tribulation has to begin the first year of a Shemitah week, which is why we have to get on God's calendar. Where are we in the Shemitah cycle? Well, I can tell you the tribulation has not begun, but I believe, uh, and right now we're like in the a third part of a Shemitah cycle. The next Shemitah cycle begins 2030 Economic Forum, uh, the World Economic Forum. Uh, it begins the fall of 2029 going into 2030 is the next Shemitah cycle. <clears throat> if the tribulation does not start then, it can't start for another seven years at the next Shemitah cycle. And so if many people believe we are that close to the end, what God is telling the church is, we have about <clears throat> four years for the greatest evangelistic revival we've ever seen. Yeah. Well, and we have these ones out there, the Great Reset, 2030. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm talking but about. But you, did you know that also in 2030 is the 2,000th year anniversary of Christianity? Yeah. Well, here's <laughs> the thing. We know from Hosea, the end of chapter 5, beginning of chapter 6, God says he's going to come, he's going to tear apart Judah and Israel, and then he's going to go back to heaven, and he says he's going to stay there uh, until Israel repents. But he says, I'm going to die and return to my place. And after two days, well, that's 2,000 years. He died in, 20, he died in 30 A.D., 2,000 years is 2030. It's exactly 2,000 yeah. years from yeah. his death. Yep. I've even seen ministries trying to push that we need to reach everybody by the year 2030. I've that's even, exactly right. I've seen exactly ministries right. saying we have to reach the, the world by 2030. Yeah, so we're we're yeah yeah we're close. And you know, I was reading on those different events that they uh, you know saying that could happen or will happen uh, during April that are just kind of interesting. But one of them is that there may be a red heifer uh, sacrifice. And I'm like, well, they may do that next month. Yes, uh, yeah, I'm that's very right. familiar with the red heifer situation, and they are not only do they have the red heifer ready, which yeah. is what purifies. Uh, they have a priest, a Cohen, who is also uh, purified now, and so I really believe they're going to go through with the red heifer thing uh, next month. Okay, well, we know it's coming, and. Uh, 
again, Pastor, tell people how they can find out more about El Shaddai Ministries, your church, your books you write. How would they go about getting a hold or finding out more about Pastor Mark Biltz? Well, thank you so much. ESM.us. www.esm.us. And all of our uh, videos are free, and we'd love to have people come and watch and learn. Well, Pastor, thanks for uh, taking your time out so we can make this uh, special edition of Crosspoint. Hey, thank you so much, Mark. Well, folks, that was a good interview there with uh, Pastor Mark Biltz, and uh, really wanted to get that out, being what's coming here on Monday. We can learn a lot, but boy, look at the Bible, this book in my right hand here. Keep your eye upon God's Word, folks. Things are happening all the time. Uh, What's happening in our world correlates with this Word of God, and it's all because it is the Word of God. It's the inspired words of God. It doesn't matter uh, where you are, who you are. This Bible is for you, and the book accurately directs you if you want to follow it. Every day of your life, it's the most important words you're ever going to read and certainly ever follow. Be sure and join us again next time as we discuss issues that are affecting the church. Have a great week, and allow God to use you for His purposes and make your plans count for eternity. I'm Mark Taylor. Crosspoint is a program produced in Studio 101 at KNAO Radio. Not all of the views on Crosspoint reflect those of the management or staff of KNAO. You may contact the Crosspoint program at 10827 Highway 86 East, the Osho, Missouri 64850, or by email crosspoint at kneo.org. You can hear Crosspoint four times a week, Saturday morning at 1, Saturday afternoon at 2, Saturday evening at 9, and Sunday evening at 7. You can also listen anytime online at kneo.org.